Right, next thing I've got to do um, is going to be painting the surfaces. So I'm going to start with the, um, the brown, sort of the mud, which would be covered um, with grass later, apart from the sides, obviously, which remain brown. Um, I'm pretty sure I've covered this in a previous video, so I won't spend too long on this. I'm using a mix of um, brown, white, and blue. So the brown is um, burnt umber, plain white, um, and uh, white glue or PVA glue. So an equal mix of those. Those are um, acrylic paints. And remember that because the, um, the PVA glue will dry clear, the mix you're going to get is going to be lighter then it will eventually dry. Um, so, let's go to work. You can definitely use a bigger brush than this. That's just the one I'm used to. Here's my suggestion. Get a nice, um, careful edge along here because you don't want to get um, you don't want to get any of the PVA onto the river base. So I've mentioned before, it will PVA glue does not get along well with the, um, the product we're using for the water. Now on the side, you've got a choice really here. I think what I tend to do is draw a line diagonally and follow the line of the bank down. Um, arguably, the water would eat into the edge here a bit and um, maybe the vertical line would be better. Doesn't really matter, I don't think. Fairly artificial thing to um, be able to see the uh, the inside of the earth, you know, cross section of the earth. Okay, so that'll do. Um, I'll let that dry. I might need to come back and do a second coat on it. Um, we'll see how it looks when it's dried. Okay, we've given the banks a chance to dry. Um, now it's going to be time to paint the, the water. Um, before you launch into this for the first time, think carefully about what colour you want your water to be. Um, and I definitely suggest that you do um, some test pieces to make sure you're happy with the colour before you launch into it because you're going to be, once you've picked your colour of water, you're pretty much going to have to stick with it for all your water um, in order for your hexes to work together. Um, it's not really like grass where you can go in afterwards and add some extra turf on top. You know, once you've once you've painted your water and you've poured your water effect sort of resin on top, you're pretty much stuck with it. So think carefully and do get some test pieces done first. Um, on my prototype, um, I use this. I'm afraid the light's not brilliant in here, so you, you have to take my word for it on the colour. But it's 
It's definitely green. I used a shade, a blend of, of um, two shades of green. So they're not, they're not mixed sort of bits of both colours. Um, and they're quite watered down. So it's a very pale green and a sort of um, uh, this one, which is called sort of Battle Green from Sistol Miniatures. Uh, and because it's quite a thin mixture, you can quite, you can kind of see the white coming through quite a bit. So on the, on the plus side, I think it came out pretty well in the photographs. The ones I included in the um, Kickstarter campaign were predominantly taken with these um, these hexagons. It looks a bit blued for my taste. I think it works fine as a um, sort of a a stream, you know, like a um, alpine stream or something like that. Or possibly, you know, sort of clear um, clear waters from out in the Pacific somewhere. But for the kind of wargaming I was wanting to do, you know, things like Normandy or just sort of a typical slightly dirty river or brook, it's just a bit too light. So when when I went moved on to the prototype to um, to be semi fully with the, with the toolkit pure foam, whereas this had the cardboard on the outside. Um, I decided to go for a darker colour and I took some reference photographs of some local rivers and I picked a colour that was a close match to, um, to what was in the photos. And it is a reasonable match for it. Um, it's a lot darker than the old one though. Uh, and I think it's possibly a bit too dark for my tastes. It, in this light it's going to look darker than it actually is, I'm sure. Um, but as I said, once you pick your colour, and I've you know I've painted a couple of dozen of these, I'm kind of stuck with it. So I shall carry on with this. So I've got some paint. Um, I've just got a single colour of paint, which uh, I've mixed with a few drops of water just to thin down a bit. Uh, and this time, make sure you do not mix in any PVA glue whatsoever. No white glue into this mix. Because as I said before, the, um, the resin product that you're using for pouring the water does not get on well with um, PVA glue. Thankfully I did some test pieces on that and I found that um, I've got some huge cracks in it. They just, they just split into sort of crazy paving. Um, Yeah, so we'll just paint this, paint this in. Making sure you need low, no white whatsoever. If you go a tiny bit over the brown, it doesn't really matter. But do not leave any white. When it comes to turfing, it'll cover over any... You know, it doesn't matter if the turf goes slightly onto the river surface. It does matter if you can see white coming through. And I like to paint the sides too, just in case you can see them coming through. If there are any slight gaps in your layout or if it's at the edge of your terrain. Try to go for a nice even coverage, I think. Um, as I said before, I don't think just like you didn't want to um, sculpt in waves onto the surface if you wanted to be able to use it in any orientation. I don't think it makes a great deal of sense to um, to make sort of shapes, you know. Um, streaks of different colour and like that. You know, even if though you might imagine you get that in the river, I don't know if you do that much, unless you've got some kind of pollutant coming into it. Uh, and versatility is absolutely key when you're dealing with um, modular hexes.
running a bit low on paint here. Hopefully I'll have just enough to finish. Which reminds me, when you're picking your colour, or picking your paint, make sure you pick something which you've got a good supply of. Which I'm afraid I have not done. I used a paint which I've had for some 20 years probably, easily. And when this runs out, I don't know how well I'll be able to find another colour to match it. Uh, so you want to get a good coverage of this because the, you know, the water effect that you put on top will not change what you see here at all. You'll see these colours exactly well. Maybe not the colours exactly, but you'll, you'll certainly see the um, any patterns or anything perfectly through it. It's going to dry clear your river coat. All it's going to do is give you extra reflections, extra gloss on it. So, get it right now or live with it forever. Okay, next step. So, we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and um, pour on our uh, river effects.